Um, I just want to let you know that, that compost is like one of the greatest ways to reinforce the soil without having to do anything practically at all. It's free and you don't have to feel guilty about putting fertilizers on your soil that might drain into waterways and stuff like that. Now, um, I started this when I was a child and I've been doing it for a really long time so watch, I'm going to change now out of selfie mode and let you see what it is okay, that I so do. So here is the results. This is, may look like dirt but it's actually almost 100% um, organic matter that's been broken down from leaves and other um, non-meat type materials. The guys that do this, a combination of a um, compost that heats up to 140 degrees or so to kill off um, weed seeds and everything. So after the composting is finished, um, you have worms like this little guy that will invade and um, turn and make it even more fertile than normal. Their poop that they produce. Now, one thing I try to do on Martha Stewart shows of this sort of stuff, she has you putting it through a screen. I don't do that. I just shovel mine straight out of the pile, and then um, as I go through, I'm, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. You have to be. We all need to get your hands dirty, but I just kind of go through and pick out any stray sticks. It's okay if you miss one or two. So what? It's all organic. They'll eventually break down. Then I put them into that pile of stuff that needs to go back into the pile. Now that's the dried leaves. You can see on the top of the pile, I've got just about everything. The only thing I don't put in is um, Bermuda grass, English ivy, um, uh, uh, um, rose bush branches with their thorns and other things that either hurt your hands or will um, possibly be an invasive species in your garden. Okay, one thing you don't want to do is try to plant the worst plants that you have everywhere. So no English ivy, no Bermuda grass, um, no uh, seeds if I can from certain kinds of trees and stuff um, mostly though the weeds the weeds themselves are okay I throw in some grassy weeds and toss them in there not a big problem if you bury them correctly and you um, get them wet enough so that it, it the decomposition process works now one of the key ingredients is in your kitchen stuff like this okay here's some mixture of coffee grounds and um, different things. This really isn't a very full bucket. A lot of times, um, Belinda uh, will fill this thing with, you know, the leftovers from making a salad or something. And we put just about anything in there that's green. Nothing, very little goes down to garbage disposal. The only thing you don't want to put in is pieces of meat. But eggshells are okay. You don't have to worry about too much. The only reason you don't put the meat in there basically is because you don't want rats feeding in your nest, okay? Two types of shovels here, like this and like that. This one here, easy to get at the big stuff, loose stuff, um, once you get it. This one here, used to cut in, because what happens is um, the compost settles over time, and the best stuff is at the bottom of the pile. The basic idea here is to shovel out from underneath, throw stuff that's not decomposed up back up on top of the pile and eventually it just keeps settling. Now one thing you'll notice is that this is made out of um, old wood. In fact, it's leaning over. It's been leaning over like this for years. Okay, so like um, don't go out and buy wood and everything. Take whatever leftover junk that you can find spare uh, screening wire of different kinds I've put in there to let it be nice and aerated on the outside and uh, then I just take some old um, plywood or something to put it up front with a wire to hold it in there I want to be able to get at the, the pile um, pretty easily so let's take a shovel out here and you can see uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get down underneath and get the very best stuff 
way back in there. It's the center of the pile where things really get heated up. It stays nice and moist down there. Look at that. Beautiful. That's That's been eaten very well by the worms, and the worms have left it because there's nothing left for them to do down there. Um, incidentally, if the worms can eat it and not die, then your soil is, is not dangerous. It's not a toxic waste. Um, here, here we go then. Now, I've got a full bucket with uh, a little bit of stuff right here that I really like. Push over here. And we got uh, plenty of it in there. Let's try seeing if this shovel now can be used to pick up Now it comes out like this too. You can just break that up. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff there. Okay. Now let's get another scoop. And I'll get, um, over a course of a year, at least, oh shoot, as many as 10 wheelbarrows. Because everything goes in. I do not, I'm, I don't mow, I actually uh, mulch mow my lawn. I don't pick up the grass. Neighbors of mine make the mistake of using the grass catcher and their lawns don't look anywhere near as good as mine does. I never, I never fertilize the lawn. All I do is mulch mow. And then, um, but I've got leaves that drop and I want to get all of those and throw them in here. And occasionally in the winter, in the fall, I'll mulch mow a little bit and then try to gather it and throw it in there. Because gr green grass really does make an excellent um, uh, material to compost with. The leaves tend to need some kind of green matter from your kitchen, uh, possibly some manure from a horse stall, things like that to, to get them to break down quickly. And of course that's really true when it comes to a, um, like you've got branches and stuff that are ground up. I use a grinder and grind up um, cuttings from my uh, pruning and that stuff will uh, decompose and the worms will eat it. So then it becomes this wonderful soil builder that we have. Time to uh, spread some of this soil around. You can turn, you can take the soil and turn it over down in here if you want, um, but in this case, um, I had some mulch that was uh, just ground up uh, bark and stuff or wood that I put on top the soil in the winter time um, over by this uh, mandarin tree. The mandarin tree is very productive. I want to make sure this thing is happy, and so. Since this top material here works really well um, to keep, along with these leaves, to keep mulch, uh, to, to keep the moisture in the soil, um, I want to also bury it and it'll decompose this stuff too. Uh, the wor There's some worms in my pile. The first thing I want to do though is pick up any spare oranges that are rotten and get rid of and throw them into the compost. There's no need to have rotten fruit on the ground. So I'll put those off to the side now for now. Okay, so then uh, what I'm gonna do is just uh, go ahead and dump this like that. And, and just push it over. I want to see what I can get out of my out of my compost. So let's back this out of the way a little bit, and then we're going to take the flat one and just push it around. You can see I put it under the the drip line of the tree, and if there's any sticks of wood and so I'll put them over by where those oranges are and they'll get back into the compost. 
so it looks like we're doing pretty good. I want to get another. Scoop or two. This stuff put on top of the uh, hot mulch, the, the ground up uh, wood chips and things of that sort, which are not really very fer much of a fertilizer themselves. In fact, they can take uh, nitrogen out of the soil, but this is been decomposed now and when this is on top of that stuff it will um, uh, when, as the water irrigation gets on it it'll percolate down and you're gonna have like just another layer of soil here so keep in mind that, that there's uh, you want to pull out any spare weeds that you might have there Keep in mind that the uh, the fruit that you harvest, you know, takes away uh, mass, on, you know, from the from the ground, right? So you have to replace it. The other thing that's uh, noteworthy is that uh, this all of the uh, um, orange rinds and stuff like that that we peeled off are part of this compost and they uh, are now going back to their home. Eager to get this job done uh, and just move on. That, which is one reason I don't really like to, I used to turn over the soil a lot and put, you know, be really conscientious about like mixing it in. But new, later, uh, Recent research has shown that that's really not very good, that there's a, a layer of, uh, you know, fungus and things like that, that that develop systems in cooperation with tree roots and all, and that you're, you're in some way better off just sort of um, tamping the soil down. So in this case, what we're doing is we're, it is like putting disturbed soil on uh, top, but this is also like, uh, the other way to look at it is the, uh, uh, it's the same basically as, as decomposed leaves, except that we have a mixture of good nutrients. It's the same way to enjoy the day, very healthy. Uh, for the plants and for the Whitney loves to watch me do it. Uh, I probably need another bucket actually. The beer is going to have to hold. Because I've got a desire for more compost. Let's, let's at least get this one bucket done and then I'll let you go. The worms are really good for the soil to re-establish uh, them into the soil is definitely a good thing. Okay, now let's see. I'll get over here. Smooth that out a little bit. And that's it, folks. Now, this stuff will be sticky on your feet. So you want to water it in. Uh, today I think I've got a little bit of a rainstorm coming in. So we're going to be okay not to water it. 